Good day, my name is Tian Gildenes, and in this DVD I want to discuss another important subject with you, namely the Athalia spirit. So many people don't know how the spirit works and what it's all about. And so we also have DVDs on the Jezebel spirit, the Leviathan spirit, the spirit of Python, etc. And also DVDs on identifying the lie of the devil. And also practical spiritual warfare and how we can live in our victory over these spirits according to the word of God and according to what Jesus did for us at the cross of Calvary. But so many people don't know what's going on in the spiritual dimension because we were never taught these things in many of our churches. But we must understand one thing. Although people say, don't give so much glory to the devil, don't speak to the devil or don't speak about the devil. No, we're not giving glory to anybody else but Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one that gives us the authority in his word to triumph over these demon spirits of the devil. But because we never taught, we were never taught this or we never learned this ourselves because we do not know our scriptures, what happens? Satan binds us and we don't know what's going on in our lives. But we must understand one thing. It's all about our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one and only King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I love Him with my whole heart. And because it's all about Him, let us pray first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank You in this day. Thank you, Lord. We know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know that you are here where we are busy with this recording, but we also know that you will be there everywhere that people will be watching this video or this DVD. And we pray that you alone will be glorified. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way now, that I will not be the one speaking, but that your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me and reveal the truths of these things from your word so that you alone can be glorified. And thank you, Lord, that you give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. We bind your works where we're busy with this recording, but also where people will be listening to this message. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God, and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Lord Jesus, we also pray now that you will cover us with your blood wherever we are, that you will set up your angels all around us, and that you yourself will be a wall of fire around about us, according to Zechariah 2, verse 5 so that all these places will be safe places while we're busy with you and with your word. Thank you, Lord, for your love with us. We pray that you will take us now by the hand through your Holy Spirit and reveal your scriptures to us so that we can live in victory in what you brought for us and bought for us with your blood, your blood at Calvary, Lord. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in this DVD, we're going to look at the following four points. Number one, the biblical history of how the Spirit operates in people's lives. Number two, power, control, and titles. Number three, characteristics of the spirit. And number four, how do we break the spirit's power? All who know me know that I always start with this verse, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13, that says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And you will see on this DVD, we will be reading what the Bible says, how the Spirit operates in people's lives, and we will see that we can understand what we read and we can acknowledge what we read so that we can also come in victory over the attacks of this enemy in our lives in Jesus' name. Because in Matthew 22 verse 29, Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. And I always say to people, that was my problem as well. I erred because I did not know my scriptures. And why did I not know my scriptures? And why did I not know the power of God? Because I did not know the author of the scriptures. I was not in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that, I did not know the power of God. But the moment that I met the Lord Jesus Christ 20 years ago now in August 1999, what happened? Through His Holy Spirit, He started revealing His Scriptures to me. And when He started revealing His Scriptures to me and I started to do what the Word says, these things happened. I experienced the power of God in my marriage, in my children's lives, in our finances, in everything we do. But I also experienced the truth of the Word of God regarding the attacks of the devil on our lives. But I know how to handle these attacks, how to live in victory over these attacks so that God alone can be glorified. And I pray that you will also receive the truth of the Word of God and start to live in your victory, in your personal life, over the attacks of the enemy and only the Holy Spirit can reveal this to you. I cannot convince you of anything but the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts us of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. So I can only share the knowledge with you that the Lord has given me and then I can only pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you in Jesus name.
At number one, we're going to look at the biblical history of how this spirit impacts people's lives. Because many people say to me, you know what, no, there's no such thing as the Athalia spirit or the Jezebel spirit or the Leviathan spirit. How can you say that? Well, we learn from the Bible. Everything that people did was because of something that Satan put into their minds, if it was the wrong things. And we read from the Bible how Athalia, the woman called Athalia, was affected by the spirit. That's why we call it the Athalia spirit. We read in the Bible how a demon spirit affected Jezebel to do certain things or impacted her life. And that's why we call it the Jezebel spirit, etc., etc., etc. We cannot say, no, there's no such thing as these spirits. No, the same spirits that impacted Jezebel's life. The same spirits that impacted Athalia's life, Ahab's life, etc., etc. Those spirits are still impacting our lives to this very day. And if we can understand this, we can also take up our victory over these spirits in the name of Jesus. But let us read, what is the history of the Athalia spirit according to the Word of God? Because if we cannot go back to the Word, it means nothing. Let us read. 2 Chronicles 21 verse 1 to 6. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah and Jehel, and Zechariah and Azariah, and Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things, with fenced cities in Judah, but the kingdom gave it to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. And that is how it worked in those days that the firstborn would receive the kingdom. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword and diverse also of the princes of Israel. Now what would cause Jehoram to kill all his brothers and some of the princes of Israel? It's only the devil, only Satan that can put thoughts in somebody's mind to say, kill your own brothers, kill these people. Because the Bible says that Satan is the one who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. So we know that Jehoram was influenced by Satan, by demon spirits of Satan to kill his brothers. In the same way that the Athalia spirit, the spirit that influenced Athalia can also influence our lives today. But let's read further. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab. For he had the daughter of Ahab, and that daughter of Ahab was Athalia, to wife. And he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. And in my DVD on the Jezebel spirit, I give the whole biblical history of King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. So they had this daughter, Athalia, and she was then married to Jehoram. So... This was the whole problem and they were all influenced by different demon spirits because Jezebel was also a Baal worshipper and she brought in Baal worship into Israel through that spirit and through that she influenced her daughter and her daughter influenced her husband and also her children as we would see. 2 Chronicles 21 verse 11 to 15 says, Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah there to say, This king Jehoram was totally disobedient to the word of God. He lived according to the ways of the kings of Israel, of Ahab and of Jezebel. Why? Because he was married to Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel. So she was influencing her husband as well. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring like the whoredoms of the house of Ahab and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. So we must understand one thing. God is not pleased. And if he's not pleased, you cannot be blessed by God if you're disobedient to his word. You don't play with God. 2 Chronicles 21 verse 16 to 20 says, 
Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians, and they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house, because God said these things will happen, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was never a son left him, save Jehoah as the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease, as God said would happen. And it came to pass that in process of time, after the end of two years, so this man was sick for very long, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, so he died of sore diseases. So that must have been very, very, very painful. And look at this now. He departed without being desired. So the people did not love this king. Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the king. So we see he was not loved. They did not even bury him in the sepulchres of the kings, and they did not desire him to be back. But we see in 2 Chronicles 21 verse 17, the name Jehoah Ahaz is given there. The writer of Chronicles calls him indifferently Jehoah Ahaz and Ahaziah, which are equivalent names. So if you see the name Jehoah Ahaz in 2 Chronicles, but also the name Ahaziah, you will know it is still the same person. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 1 to 6 says, And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest brothers of Ahaziah, of course, as God said, according to the prophecy that Elijah brought to Jehoram. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Now Omri was the father of Ahab. And you will see now, she was actually the granddaughter of Omri. But in the language of that time, they would say the daughter of Omri, meaning she was of that line. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. This is now Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Why? For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So she taught him to do the wrong things, to sin against the God of Israel. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. He did not listen to God. He did not listen to the priests of God. He listened to his mother, who was of the house of Ahab. She was the daughter of Jezebel. She manipulated, and this was all done to his destruction. He walked also after their counsel and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria. Now we must understand this Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, is not the same Jehoram that was the father of Ahaziah. And Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab, at Jezreel, because he was sick. And again, now note that Azariah is the same man as Ahaziah, as Jehoahaz. It's just different names for the specific same person. And let's look at that sentence about Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. More properly, granddaughter. This is according to a commentary in the Old and New Testament, Jameson, Fawcett and Brown. The expression is used loosely, as the statement was made simply for the purpose of intimating that she belonged to that idolatrous race. She came from the line of Omri, who was the father of Ahab, who was the father of Athaliah. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 7 to 12 says, And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God by coming to Joram. For when he was come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And I give more details about this on, on my DVD on the Jezebel spirit. And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab and found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah, that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. But look at this now. But when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. What is this woman doing now? She is killing all her own grandchildren. She now kills all her sons sons that can be kings, that can be the royal seed that would follow her, their father. She killed him. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. 
So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. And he, this Joash, was with them hid in the house of God six years, and Athaliah reigned over the land for those six years. And after those six years, 2 Chronicles 23 verse 11 to 15, we read, Then they brought out the king's son, that's Joash, and put upon him the crown, and gave him the testimony, and made him king. And Jehoiada, that's the priest, and his sons anointed Joash, and said, God save the king. Now when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people into the house of the Lord, and she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar, at the entering in, and the princes and the trumpets by the king, and all the people of the land rejoiced. Then Athalia rent her clothes and said, Treason, treason. Then Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds that were set over the host, and said unto them, Have her forth of the rangers, and for whoso followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Slay her not in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and when she was come to the entering of the horse gate by the king's house, they slew her there. 2 Chronicles 23 verse 16 to 21 says, And Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people and between the king that they should be the Lord's people. So now they are turning back to the Lord God, away from Baal and the things that Athaliah brought into Israel or in, into Jerusalem and Judah at that time. Then all the people went to the house of Baal and break it down and break his altars and his images and pieces and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And that's what we must also do. We must break down our Baal worship in our lives so that we can come into victory over this Athaliah spirit. Also, Jehoiada appointed the officers of the house of the Lord by the, hands of, by the hand of the priests. And he set the porters at the gates of the house of the Lord that none which was unclean in anything should enter in. And he took the captains of hundreds and the nobles and the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought down the king from the house of the Lord. And they came through the high gate into the king's house and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom. And all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet after that they had slain Athaliah with the sword. And we will see this. The Athalia spirit also wants to bind you and keep you away from the truth of the word of God. She would let, like to try and pull you into false worship, letting you think you're doing the right things, but you're doing the wrong things, manipulating your life, stealing the royal seed from your heart, as we will see a little later. And then she would also like, if you stand up for the truth of the word of God, she would like to condemn you, saying, you are the one... Uh, doing the wrong things while you are actually the one doing the right thing. She wants to make you feel condemned. She wants to make you feel guilty for doing the right things. And we must see that this is the way that this spirit has been impacting people's lives since the time of Athaliah, of Jehoram. That same spirit, and we just call it the Athalia spirit because we have seen the first instance of how the spirit influences lives was in the time of Athalia. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you and that you will understand how you can also live in victory over the spirit. At number two, we're going to look at power, control and titles, as this is what Athalia is all about. On this slide that I'm showing you, you will see uh, who I'm giving acknowledgement to. I acknowledge all the other different authors whose work I also researched regarding this specific person. So I, I acknowledge them for what they did in the kingdom. And when I use their stuff, I give them that credit by giving the names or the links at the bottom of my slides. Now this message is about power. It seems many love titles in this day and age. That's true. People so like to have these titles and to be better than others. There is a feeling one gets when honored by men. A title can make one feel important or fill a void from childhood because I was never acknowledged as a young boy or a young girl. Oh, my title, I've worked so hard for this title. I worked so hard for this master's degree, for this doctor's degree, for this, this, for this, that, whatever. You see, because I have this void from my childhood. Some people have a certain longing to be recognized, patted on the back and noticed. 
And Jesus said about them in Matthew 23, verse 6 to 10, because he was referring to the rabbis and the Pharisees and all these people who had all the knowledge of the scriptures, but they did not know Jesus or they did not actually have an intimate personal relationship with God himself. And he said about them, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And we must understand this. If I tell you, you must call me pastor or reverend Tian or whatever the case may be, which I'm not, what happens? I'm letting myself be called master. I cannot do that because then I am disobedient to the word of God. If I tell you, call me professor so-and-so or call me doctor so-and-so, I, I put out my hand to you and I say, hi, I am whatever the title may be. I am disobedient to the word because Jesus said, don't do that. Because you have only one master, Jesus Christ himself. But this spirit of Athalia likes all the attention to be upon them. Let us read further. There is a big difference in being proud of your accomplishments and being prideful. Pride is puffed up. It's when we say our way is best or we are the only ones doing it right. Pride puts others down. Pride sneaks in. And it can make us think we are holier than the next person. That is spiritual pride. We must beware of spiritual pride. It can creep into leadership and cause sickness to infiltrate us. Pride says we drive better, cook better, look better, are smarter than our colleagues and have more wisdom with our spending, more discernment, more talent, gifting, prophetic knowledge, and the list goes on and on. Athalia had a sickness. Many of us do, and we don't even realize it. Giving God the glory for everything is a must. My dear friend, I must tell you today, somebody said to me once, we dare not touch the glory of God. We must give God the glory for everything in our lives. The moment that I take the glory for myself because of what I did, of all the things that I got, whatever the case may be, I am now playing with fire. Athalia sat upon the throne of David and she reigned six years. How did she do it? She murdered all her grandchildren. That's how. God have mercy if we have someone as evil as this woman in office or in our families because we do get that. That this spirit makes that some people in families wants to rule the family and she would kill anything. If anybody stands up against her and everybody says, yes, we know in our family, aunt so-and-so is in control of this family. Our um so-and-so or Mr. So-and-so is in control in our family. It's that spirit trying to control and manipulate a whole family through one person pulling down anything that you say, criticizing you if you want to stand up for the truth of the word. Did you notice Athalia destroyed everyone who could take her place? I have seen this jealousy in his body, referring to Jesus' body, where many have destroyed with their tongues other people's character to keep the eyes of the people on them. Jealousy is in the body of Yeshua and in his people when it should it be. And even Paul warned us about this in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 12 and 13 that he says, Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Kepha, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? We get this today, that people say, I am from the church of pastor so-and-so. I am from the church of reverend so-and-so. I am from the church of minister so-and-so. And they all think that only they are right. No, we must understand one thing. Christ is not divided. We must understand and realize that we are part of the body of Christ if we have received the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And we must stop allowing these demon spirits to cause this division in the body of Christ. This woman, Athalia, wanted all eyes upon her and she wanted the glory so severely she was willing to murder her own flesh and blood. 
Is our brother or sister of another title our own flesh and blood? This is now in the body of Christ. We are divided by the doctrines of men. We will all get on the same page and eventually be a strong army, bones coming together with his ruach breath to be one. But look at what this author says. We are divided by the doctrines of men. We are divided by, I believe in the rapture. No, I don't believe in the rapture. I believe in being baptized uh, as a baby. I don't believe in being baptized as a baby because we must be baptized as, baptized as adults. And because of these doctrines of causing the div division, we are divided by the doctrines of men because we don't understand what the word of God teaches just as it is written. But there will come a day that we will be one strong army coming together with the Ruach breath, the breath of the Holy Spirit to be one in Jesus. And a very important point to take note of is that this demon spirit always cries treason, treason. Whatever it is that this spirit projects upon the righteous person that resists it is that which truly exists in its own heart. It is a very strong spirit to fight against what does that mean? It means that the moment that you stand up against that spirit in your family or in your church or at the business where you're working, you will be blamed that you are wrong. You are now doing the wrong things because he wants you to stop. He wants you to feel guilty. He wants you to feel condemned. And whatever is in his heart, he will blame you of that. He might be Without any love of Jesus, it might be hard condemning whatever the case may be. And then he will blame you of not having the love of Christ. He will blame you of being hard-hearted. He will blame you of being condemning and whatever the case may be. But you're just wanting to do the right thing according to the word of God. But that person who is being bound by the spirit of Athalia will blame you of these, these things. That's why it calls treason, treason. You are wrong. You are wrong. But meantime, he or she is the one being wrong. Now, I told you all that to tell you this. The spirit of Jezebel is strong, but so is the spirit of Athalia. The only way to stop this spirit was for the priests, look at this, for the priests to join together, to come in unity and pray and teach the younger generation in fear. We must come in unity as kings and priests for our God. And we must pray and we must teach our younger generations in fear, fear of the Lord, about the word of God. But we don't teach our younger generations anymore. We don't teach. Why? Because we don't even know our own scriptures, as Jesus said. So it is time that we stand up and become this generation of kings and priests for our God, teaching our younger generations so that they can stand up as kings and priests for our God. When there is corruption in the headship of an assembly or a government seat, it has a trickle-down effect. We have seen this before, where a pastor or a preacher is in an, an adulterous affair. Many of the people in his congreg congregation also are in adulterous affairs. Why? Because it trickles down from the headship of the assembly. I have watched this over and over again. Corruption in authority means corruption in the body and in the people. They call people brave who are not heroic. They call evil good and good evil. And look at the warning that God gave us in Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them. And that word woe in the Hebrew means calamity and disaster waits unto them that call evil good. So if you call these evil things happening on television and in our daily lives around us, if you call that good, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, yes, we can do yoga. Oh, yes, we can do all these things. You are calling evil good. Woe unto you. But also woe unto you if you call good evil. If you call the good things that people stand up for, if you call that evil and say, no, that's from the devil. No, that's not the right thing to do. Woe unto you. This is a warning in our lives today. It's applicable to us even to this very day. Now this is the whole crux of this message that I have on this DVD. Athalia kills the royal seed. This is what we must understand. This is what this spirit does. It kills the royal seed physically or spiritually. Spiritually, when God puts something in your heart 
A tailor steals away that dream that God put in your heart. It might have been that you want to work with the elderly or you wanted to work with young children. But all these things happened to you. All the hell broke loose around you and eventually you did not get to that place. That was a tailor that killed the royal seed in your life. This seed was of the lineage of the Messiah and the physical in this instance. These were kingdom inheritors and the seed that was meant to rule. That is what this spirit does and it is working in this day. It loves to slay the mighty leaders, the office of the prophet and the prophetic voices and those who exalt Yeshua and it comes with false motives. Idol worship and jealousy is a stench in our father's nostrils. Men have made it about them and yes, we have made it a show. Unfortunately, it is true in many of our churches today. People so want to be glorified. You see, you will only listen to me. Only I, as pastor of the church, can hear the voice of the Lord. You will not listen to the Lord yourself. You cannot because you're not good enough. You're not mature enough. You're not spiritually, whatever the case may be. I am the one. That's pride. That is pride. And unfortunately, it goes down into the rest of the assembly. So people make it about themselves and they make a show of the whole thing. And we must be aware of this in the name of Jesus. Many people have put their faith in another person, putting such a person on a pedestal, putting their pastor, their reverend, their minister on a pedestal. But no man may ever receive God's glory. We read in Acts 12, verse 21 to 23, And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Because we read in Isaiah 48 verse 11 already, For mine own sake, God says, even for mine own sake will I do it. For how should my name be polluted and I will not give my glory unto another? God said, I will not give my glory to any other, not to a man, not to any other demon or spirit or... Um, idol that people may uh, try to worship, I will not give my glory unto another. And in Jeremiah 17 verse 5, thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So God does not give his glory to any other, and we must understand this. We dare not touch the glory of God. And that is why we cannot, as Christians, share the glory of God and go and pray for rain with another group of believers, with the Muslims, with the Hindus, with all the other faiths. We cannot, because then we are sharing the glory of God. We cannot stand on the same podium and pray to different gods and say, okay, God, I know he's praying to Allah, and I know he's praying to Buddha, and I know he's praying to Brahma, but God, I'm praying to you. Now you are sharing the glory of God, and God does not give his glory to any other. I have a testimony from, from a friend of mine who died a few years ago. He was in a deliverance ministry and one day a young man that was in Satanism came to him and said, why should I accept your God? Because you only have one God. I have seven. And every morning when I have my time of prayer, they would come and appear before me, all seven those gods. And my friend said he was taken aback and said, which seven gods? And the guy said, well, one was Buddha, one was Krishna, one was this and one was that. But the seventh one was Jesus. And my friend said, oh, what do you mean Jesus? He said, yes, Jesus appears to me every morning. And my friend said, what does Jesus do? Well, he quotes scripture to me, the man says. Every morning he just quotes scripture with all the six others. God's all, also standing in front of me. And my friend said, no, I'm going to pray about this. So he prayed and he said to the Lord, Lord, what's happening here? And the Lord gave him this, Isaiah 48 verse 11, where he said, I share my glory, glory with no other. And he said to my friend, ask that young man if we can reveal that demon to him. And my friend went back to this young man and he said, My God does not share his glory with other gods. Can we ask God, the true God, to reveal that Jesus to you? And the young man said, Yes. So my friend prayed and the Lord revealed the, dem the demon with all his horrific, whatever you may call it. And that young man fell on the, gr on the ground and he said, I want to serve your God because your God is greater than all these. This is what we must understand. God does not give his glory to any man to any demon or to Satan. So we must also not share God's glory with any other religions and think it will be acceptable to God. And I really pray that the Lord will open this to you in Jesus' name.
And number three, we are now going to look at the characteristics of this Athalia spirit. Baal worship demands perfection and performance. This is what we must understand. And many of us grew up seeking after perfection and being performance driven. If I get an A on my report, I will have a bicycle or I would get a bicycle as a gift. So we were taught to be performance driven, but that is not from God. If the enemy has targeted our next generation, there is more pressure than ever before for them to believe they must perform for God's love or attempt to be perfect to please Him. And we can never do that. We cannot perform for God's love. We cannot please Him through our own deeds. Precious believer, the enemy has set up false worship in our midst. The truth must be taught from non-condemning platforms that God is love and that He loves us unconditionally. Only the blood of Jesus makes us righteous and holy. No performance of dead works, religious acts, doctrines or any other forms of perfection make us holy. I believe it is religion that is driving away the next generation. God is not seeking us through religion. He is seeking our hearts. And I say it many times. Religion is dead. Relationship with Jesus Christ is life. I was so busy with dead religion for 36 years of my life that I never got to the true Jesus Christ. But only when I met the Lord Jesus Christ in August 1999 did my whole life change. Because then religion was exchanged in my life for relationship with the living God. And unfortunately, as long as I'm busy with religion, I also will think that I must do good things to be saved. I must do good things to glorify God. I must do good things to please God. No, no, no. We must understand one thing. I do not do deeds of faith to be saved or to get saved. I do the things of faith and the deeds of faith because I am saved. Because I so love my Lord Jesus Christ and because I'm so thankful of what He did for me, I want to do certain things for Him. I also have a whole DVD on rewards in heaven where I explain this in more detail. But we must understand one thing. We are never saved by our religious acts, by our good deeds and so many people out there teach their followers. The Roman Catholic Church teach their followers. You must be saved by your good works. You cannot be saved by your good works. You can only be saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. By accepting that, by receiving that, according to John 1 verse 12 and 13. But as long as I am now performance driven, even in my religion, Athalia is binding me. Athalia is killing the royal seed because God wants me to do the right things according to his word. But I now do the right things according to my church. I ask people many times, how's your relationship with Jesus Christ? And then they say, oh, I work very hard for my church. Thank you. That's not what I asked you. I did not ask you whether you're working for the church. I asked you what your relationship with Jesus Christ is like. Because there is a huge difference. But let's proceed. Athalia's story is documented in 2 Kings 8 to 11 and 2 Chronicles 22 to 24. She was also a Baal worshipper and brought her idols into Judah, just as her mother Jezebel brought her idols and false prophets into Israel. Interestingly, Athalia targeted the throne of Judah, which means praise. She not only wanted praise for herself, lusting of the power and authority, but also she desired praise for her false idols, especially Baal. Jezebel was a seductive, manipulating woman who murdered, worshipped idols, and is publicly linked to witchcraft and sorcery. I discussed this in more detail on my DVD on the Jezebel spirit. It is this same spirit at work today to seduce the saints into sin, control, and apostasy. However, her seed is even more active, more seducing, and more treacherous than Jezebel was because Athalia kills the royal seed. She does not only manipulate, she really wants to kill that royal seed spiritually in your life, but also physically by trying to kill our generations. Athalia, a generation of evil. Athalia is the spirit that attacks our generations. God is very concerned about the generations to come. Yet at the same time as our generations are coming forth to receive godly inheritance, 
There is a generation of vipers in the form of religious Pharisees and Sadducees, even in our church, strongholds of tradition that we need to be concerned about. In Matthew 12 verse 34, Jesus addresses the generation of vipers, which I believe refers to and is inclusive to the generation of Jezebel and Athaliah. And in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, God says, I call heaven and earth to recall this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now look at this. God says, I have said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose. He has given us the free will to choose. So he says, my child, choose life so that you can live you and your seed, your generations, your children, your children's children, your great-great-grandchildren. Choose life because what you choose will impact their lives. If you choose life, it will impact their lives with life, with good lives, with following God, for being like you and following Jesus and living according to the word. But if you choose death, you will impact your generations with death in different forms and kinds. I discuss this in more detail on my DVDs on practical spiritual warfare. But God gives us the choice. What do we choose? Athalia would like you to choose death. Because she wants to kill the royal seed, your physical descendants as well, as she wants to kill the spiritual seed that God planted in your heart or their hearts. Athalia murdered her own grandsons. You read that sentence correctly. This queen of evil intentionally killed her offspring, as we read in 2 Chronicles 22, verse 10 and 11. Why? So she herself could rule over Judah. What kind of woman is so power-hungry and ruthless that she will kill her own grandkids? It's, it's, you can't even imagine that a grandmother would kill her own grandchildren. I'm also a grandfather now and my wife is a grandmother and I know she will fight to the end for her grandchildren. So what kind of a woman would kill her own grandkids? Someone like Athalia. You know, someone that is bound by the spirit that we call the Athalia spirit today. She is a prime example of what the Bible calls unloving, 2 Timothy 3 verse 3, which is translated as without natural affection in the King James Version. Sadly, today we see some mothers failing to show natural love for their kids. Many murder them via abortion even before they are born. Others abandon them shortly after their birth. Still others forsake their husband and kids to run off with another man. This is all different ways that the spirit of Athalia tries to kill the royal seed. And as we see and understand how the characteristics of this spirit works, we can start to think and realize, oh yes, so that thing that happened to me there, that dream I had in my heart to live according to the word and suddenly people attacked me for that and suddenly my family said, do you think you're holier than thou, whatever the case may be. That was actually the Athalia spirit that killed the royal seed in my heart. So Lord, please bring back that royal seed in my heart so that I can live in victory and do what you called me to do. And I really pray that the Holy Spirit will make you understand this and, and will make you realize and see how the spirit works in your life so that you can also be set free from this because it is possible in the name of Jesus. Now we will end this DVD with point number four. How do we break the Spirit's power? We can afflict Athalia through our prayers. In other words, we must become prayer warriors. Pray without ceasing. I also have a DVD on intercession and spiritual warfare. How we can do intercession for our uh, marriages, our children, our families, our churches, our schools, whatever the case may be. And then we can afflict Athalia through our prayers. We can cause the plans of the seducing spirits to be troubled, crushed and put to death as we come into unity. We must understand one thing. We can cause the plans of those spirits to be put to death because those spirits can never die. But if we come into unity, because the Bible says the Lord commands his blessing where there's unity. That's why Satan tries to cause division because he knows then God cannot command his blessings. Unity involves being in agreement with his word as well as being unified as one in Him. By speaking the word over our situations and problems, we can bring torment to our adversary. 
And let's not forget this very powerful weapon, repent. Jezebel hates repentance. As we repent, it will thwart the enemy's plans against us and also at the very same time release God's glory into every situation. Understand one thing, my brother and my sister, the moment that I repent, 1 John 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is true and righteous to forgive us all our iniquities and our sins. And Hebrews 8 verse 12 says, He will not remember our sins ever again. So the moment that I repent, Jezebel and Athaliah's hold over us is broken and they cannot use it against us any longer. Interestingly, the name Athaliah also means due season of Jehovah. Prophetically speaking, it is Jehovah's due season to destroy the seductive spirit of Jezebel and Athaliah by commissioning a violent militant force of saints. A violent militant force of saints. That sounds incredible, but it's true. We must become prayer warriors. We must become saints who stand up in our authority, in the power and in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let yourself be stopped and think that if the world says boo, we are supposed to fall on our backs because, oh, we must just love everyone. We must just be uh, soft-spoken and all these. Now, yes, we can be soft-spoken, but we are the ones living in authority, saying, no, I don't take that lie in the name of Jesus. I am part of this army of saints standing up for the truth of the word of God. If we are to enter this greater realm of God's glory, then we must watch over our gates of entrance and defeat a failure. We must keep her from affecting us and the generations to come. How will we keep her from affecting us and the generations to come? By standing up for the truth of the word, by fighting in the spirit and in our prayer lives against the spirit trying to kill the royal seed in our lives and also in our children. We must embrace the fire of God's presence, the refiner's fire that will come in the last days. We must embrace this. The Bible says Jesus Christ the one is the one that baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And that fire is the fire that burns away everything in my life that is not from Him. But it is also that fire that starts to burn on my inside, the zeal to do more for Him. To do what his word says. Why? Because I love him. Because I am saved. Not to become saved through what I do, as I said earlier. And this is what we must understand. Embrace that refiner's fire. Lord, make that fire hotter in my life. Oh God, what are you doing now? Well, you ask me, child, to make that fire hotter. Burn away everything that's not like me. That's what we must understand. We must embrace that refiner's fire. Why? Because the Bible says that refiner's fire will come in the last days. When we study the book of Daniel, it gives insight into the last days saying, many will be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And you must now decide which one you are. Are you part of the wicked that do wickedly? And that don't understand what's happening in these end times? Or are you part of the wise that understands what's happening in these end times? Daniel 12 verse 10. It is clear that God was alerting Daniel that the last days would involve a time of purification and refining the saints. The wicked will not understand and run away from the fire. But the saints will understand the fire. This is not the fire of hell. This is the fire of God cleansing us, purifying us, sanctifying us, pulling us closer to God, burning away everything that's not like Him. The saints will understand the fire and embrace it as necessary to receive the greater levels of His glory. Daniel 12 verse 9 and 10, that's the verse there. And He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And we are now in the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white. So you will be purified and made white if you are willing to embrace that fire of God and will be tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And because we know we are in the end times, I also have a book on the rapture of the saints and the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I discuss the following verse in much detail there in Luke 21 verse 36 that says, Watch ye therefore and pray always. Look at that. Watch and pray always. Why? That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Look at this. 
that you may be accounted worthy. So that means if you don't watch and pray always, you may not be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass at the second coming of Christ. When we study about Athaliah, we see how it took the priesthood anointing to destroy her. The same will happen today in your life. If you stand up in your role as king and priest, and in the priesthood anointing that God has given you, you will be able to destroy the attacks of the Athalia spirit on yourself, on the kingdom seed in your life, and over your own generations, your own children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever the case may be. Athalia murdered her own male descendants to illegitimately secure the throne of authority in Judah. It was the priests who exposed Athaliah's illegitimate authority and crowned the true authority to the throne. When we study the qualifications of the priesthood, we realize that they were cleansed, look at this, they were cleansed and purified and dedicated to the service of the Lord. And if we want to break the hold of Athaliah, the Athaliah spirit in our lives and in our children's lives, we must also become such priests for our God who are cleansed and purified and dedicated to the service of the Lord. It was the priests who prepared the temple and sacrifices, inviting God's glory to appear. It will be the same priestly anointing that God will use in us today to destroy this enemy who stands at the gates of our breakthroughs. Remember this one important thing. It is not a priesthood of religion that will destroy our enemy. It is a priesthood of those in relationship with God. As I said repeatedly before, religion is dead. Relationship with God is life. And the verse that confirms this for us is 1 Peter 2 verse 9 that says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There you see that. If you have chosen the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, and if you have not yet, there will be a prayer at the back of this DVD that you can pray to receive the Lord Jesus in your life. And then you must start to live according to the Word of God, study the Word of God, and to walk after righteousness, and to seek after sanctification. But then you will also be a part of this royal nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that will show forth what? Praises of Him. Who is He? Jesus. Who has called you out of the darkness into His marvelous light. You will do the same things. And then you will be able to stand up in victory over the attacks of Athalia in your personal life and in your children's lives. Because God has got a covenant with you for your children and your grandchildren. You can go and read for yourself Isaiah 59 verse 21 where God says, I have a covenant with you. My spirit that rests upon you and my words that I put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth nor from the mouths of your seed, your children, or your seed's seed, your grandchildren, from now until forever, the Bible says. So Lord Jesus, thank you for the covenant that you have with me for my children and my grandchildren. And I call them into the kingdom of God because of the covenant that you have with me. When Athalia heard and saw that Joash was made king. She tore her clothes and cried, treason, treason. She did this really passionately. Treason is the crime of trying to overthrow your country's government. The truth is that she was actually the one who had committed and sustained the crime since seven years ago when her son was killed. And remember, she reigned for six years. So for a full seven years, she was busy with, the, with this deception. She was the one who was actually living in treason. Today, this kind of cry is happening against the church and we are to overcome it and stand our ground like the priests and Judah did against it. We have to overcome the spirit of Athalia's cry in any way or dimension it manifests itself. It is a spirit of false accusation, laying sin on the saints in order to allow sin to continue. It is the spirit of accusing the righteous of sinful intents when they are actually doing the right thing. Here are a few examples of this spirit's operation against the church. Have you heard the cry against the true church as being homophobic or hateful people? 
Homophobic is when people speak against homosexualism or lesbianism. Yes, this is the spirit of Athalia's cry at work. God from the beginning designed that the man should leave his father and mother and cleave to a woman and the two shall become one flesh. God did not create Adam and Adam or Eve and Eve. He created Adam and Eve and said this was good. Anything that seeks to change this order is to turn what is good into evil. And remember the warning in Isaiah 5 verse 20 that says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So if you call the marriage between a husband and a wife evil, then woe unto you. If you call the marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman good, woe unto you. The very order of nature shows clearly that marital and sexual union should be between members of the opposite sex, even in nature. You have never seen a homosexual or two homosexual uh, elephants or two homosexual lions or two homosexual uh, deer, whatever the case may be. Even nature shows us this is the way God created us. Jesus and his church is a spiritual example of what marriage is meant to be. The point is that when Christians stand for the truth, that spirit will begin to cry against them in an effort to use guilt or intimidation to prevent them from doing the will of God. It is not hate, but rather love to show people the truth. We don't hate LGBT, that's the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people, but we hate what they do. And we want them to know Jesus and repent. This is real love. When I met the Lord Jesus Christ 20 years ago, I had to repent of my sins and stop doing the wrong things. And this was the real love of friends that came to me and said to me, Tian, you're busy with the wrong things. Stop doing that. Stop doing this. And I confessed it before the Lord. I repented and He set me free because those brothers of mine loved me with the true love of Christ. The priests went ahead and established Joash as king killed Athalia and restored the kingdom to the worship of the true God. The church too must carry on its mandate despite false accusations. We must overcome evil with good and not evil with evil. A similar cry to this one is don't judge me. But no one is judging anyone when the truth is simply spoken in love. Light must reveal darkness for it to be truly light. The Bible says that we must uh, exhort one another on a daily basis and rebuke each other if we're doing the wrong things. But the moment that you go and do that, you want to rebuke your brother or your sister or exhort your brother or your sister, immediately the accusation comes against you to say, oh, you are judging me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm, going, I'm coming to exhort you, to rebuke you for doing the wrong things. Why? Because I love you. I speak the truth in love. But the spirit of Athalia says, oh, you are judging me. No, 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 no. That's a false accusation because he wants you who are doing the right thing to feel guilty. And understand one thing today, my dear friend, guilt never comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never works with feelings of guilt or accusation. He works with the still small voice of conviction in your life. That still small voice that we called our conscience that says, no, my child, you know that's wrong. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do that thing this way. That's the right way to do it. Stop this. That's the still small voice of conviction. He does not work with accusation or with guilt because that is the accuser of the brethren. That is Satan using Athalia, Jezebel and all these other spirits to attack us with false accusations. You might be familiar with this spirit's cry against the church as hypocrites. Anytime the church stands for righteousness and holiness, the next thing you would hear is that they are just hypocrites. We must not let this cry intimidate us from the stand in righteousness and holiness. Don't let yourself be stopped. Stand up for the truth of the word. There may be a couple of hypocrites here and there. Of course, there are. But God has his 7,000 who haven't bowed their heads to the bail of sin and unrighteousness. There are many other people out there who believe like you do and who stand up for the truth. Don't think you're the only one trying to stand up. Like Elijah said to God after he had killed all the Baal priests, he said, Lord, she wants to kill me now and I'm the only one that did not bend my knee to Baal. And God said, no, 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 Elijah, you're not the only one. There are 7,000 others that I have kept safe. 
So I don't think you are the only one being persecuted for standing up for the truth of the word. There are many others out there who are also being persecuted. Just know you're not alone. You will be called an extremist these days if you are against abortion. Abortion is murder. God regards the life in the womb as valuable as that of a full-grown person. God was careful to instruct Joseph on how to care for Mary because she was carrying Jesus in the womb. Rebecca was told that Jacob and Esau would be great nations when they were not yet born. Jeremiah was known even before he was formed in his mother's womb. What would have happened if they were aborted if it, or if Jesus was aborted? The voice of Athalia's passionate cries continues to sound against other righteous engagements of the saints. And the saints must recognize and overcome this voice. Understand one thing. Yes, it happens to this day that people say, but there are legal rights to have abortion, whatever the case may be. But the question is, have you asked the Lord first if that can be done? Because that child belongs to him. Because in Jeremiah 1, verse 4 and 5, God says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. So how dare we kill little babies in the mother's womb who were known by God and conse consecrated by God even before they were born without even discussing it with Him, asking Him if this is in His hands. Because if we really pray to Him, He could have healed that child. He could have provided for me to bring up that child. So if... You had an abortion, my dear sister. Pray to God and ask Him to forgive you. Confess that sin and then stand up and know that that child is in heaven with God because he was known by God, consecrated by God, even before he was killed in your womb. But understand one thing, this is the Athalia spirit that killed that child in the womb. The Athalia spirit that kills the generation. So God's got a plan with you and with all your children. He wants you to be prophets for the nations. Why? Because in Matthew 28 verse 19 he says, go make disciples of all the nations. So Satan says, I know this. I know that he or she or that little baby is supposed to be a prophet for the nations. I know the word of God. We must understand one thing. Satan knows the word of God and he knows what the word of God says and he knows that that child is supposed to go and make disciples. So he says, no, let me kill that child in the mother's womb through abortion or whatever the case may be. But that is the way that Athalia works to kill the royal seed in the spiritual and in the physical. The secret to victory is to know that Satan's chief duty is to accuse the church. He is the accuser of the brethren, as I said, not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not accuse. Overcome his voice with the truth of God's word, like Jesus did in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights when Satan persecuted him or tempted him, tempted him, Jesus said, Satan, it is written, it is written, it is written. So he always used the truth of God's word against the devil. When Satan comes with guilt and condemnation, we must overcome him with what God's word says, with what is the right thing according to God's standard, not according to the world standard or according to people. We must never be politically or socially correct, but simply correct according to the word of God. So many people today want to please people because they don't want to be politically incorrect. They always want to be socially correct. And this author says we must never be politically or socially correct, but only, but simply correct according to the word of God. Because understand one thing, we will stand before the throne of God one day. You're not going to stand before the throne of human acceptance or the throne of humanity or the throne of um, human rights or whatever the case may be you are going to stand before the throne of a holy God and his word will be the only barometer his word will be the only thing that will be used to test what we did it is not treason or any other evil thing to do the will of God ignore the voice of the enemy and march on still in the will of your Lord Jesus Christ this is wisdom. And to end, this is what we must do to ensure that not just a failure, but other spirits of Satan will not bind us and oppress us demonically. Firstly, take time and effort and be committed to seek God's glory. It's, it takes time to come into a relationship with God. It's not something that happens overnight. 
You have to spend time in the Word of God. You have to spend time praying, speaking to Him. Whenever you drive in your car, walk in, in nature, or whatever your case may be, take time and effort and be committed to see God's glory. Secondly, embrace the fire of sanctification and holiness and of His power and glory, as I explained earlier. Lord, burn through me. Let your fire burn away everything that's not from you or that's not like you. Be a committed and set apart priest for the Lord. Ask the Lord. And again, just let's get back to that. Be a committed and set apart priest for the Lord. If I give my commitment to the Lord and I'm set apart, I, it does not mean I'm, I'm not among the other people of, of the world. We are still in the world, but we're not of this world. But I'm not doing the same things that, that, as, that they do. I am like Jesus, who also went up into the mountains from time to time to spend set apart time with His Heavenly Father. We must also do that. The following one is, ask the Lord to be jealous over you. God says, I'm a jealous God. This will start to release the fire of purity in you and also a zeal and a passion for the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to move freely in us and in our churches, businesses and all other areas of our lives. Remove the limitations of fear, control, manipulation and traditional religious mindsets and let the Lord move in us in the way that He wants to. Pray that we will hear clearly what the Holy Spirit says and that we will be quick to react on His leading. Take time to get to know the Holy Spirit. Again, take time to get to know Him. It takes time to get to know the Holy Spirit. Free yourself of religious limitations, for example, traditional religious presuppositions on exactly how God will move in and among us. Free yourself of religious limitations. Because yes, we all grew up with these religious presuppositions on exactly how God will move in and among us. And we must free ourselves from that. And we will only be able to free ourselves from that if we read the Word of God and let Him speak in and through us and reveal Himself to us. Let go and let God. Allow God to show you His glory in His own way. Destroy Jezebel and Athaliah by the confession of sin and temptations and by becoming priests for Him and by fighting the spiritual war for the future of our upcoming generations. We must become a holy nation. We must become a royal priesthood. And then lastly, become powerful worshippers. Get rid of all the secular music that you're listening to. Get yourself some gospel music and worship Him. Praise Him in your music, in your house, in your car. But also become worshippers when you're on your knees, praying to God, speaking to God. And lastly, the two verses that I want to share with you. How do we resist Athalia and all these other demon spirits? I discuss this in much more detail on my DVDs on practical spiritual warfare that you can also watch on YouTube if you would like or order from myself. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Look at that. Look at that. There are some conditions there. The first condition is submit yourself to God. Lord, I submit my thoughts to you, my life, my body, my marriage, my business, my career, my children. I submit it to you, Lord. I confess my sins. I forgive those that have hurt me. By doing all these things, I'm submitting myself to God. Then resist the devil. How do I resist the devil? Jesus never thought away a demon. He always spoke the word of God over them. And this is how we must resist the devil. We must speak it out aloud. Everywhere, if he attacks me, I speak against the spirit of Athalia. I speak against the spirit of Jezebel or whatever the case may be. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, the Bible says. Why? Because the Bible also says, I live no more, yet Christ lives within me. Galatians 2 verse 20. And 1 John, uh, yes, 1 John 4 verse 4 says, He that is within me is greater than he who is in the world. So if I know this, I can stand up in this authority. And 1 Peter 5 verse 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist, steadfast in the faith. Look at that. God says we must resist him steadfast in the faith. How? By speaking out the word of God, like Jesus, that Satan, it is written. 
If I submit myself to God and I resist you, you will flee from me. So Spirit of Athalia, you leave my children over alone. Spirit of Athalia, I break your hold over this uh, royal seed that God has planted in my heart. You will leave my thoughts alone. You will leave my body alone in Jesus' name. This is the way to resist these demon spirits. But as I say, I discuss it in more detail on how to do this on a daily basis over and over and over in uh, or on my DVDs on practical spiritual warfare. And before I end with a prayer, remember I spoke about Baal worship wanting us to be driven and to produce and to do all these things because the more I can do, the more I can be loved. When I got into this ministry, in this year in 2019, this is my 17th year in full-time ministry. When I started 17 years ago, because before that, I was a lawyer for 10 years of my life. So I was performance driven because the more you do, the more successful you will be, etc, etc, etc. That's the way we all grew up. And I started coming into the ministry and I started to do these things because I still believed that if I see more people, God will love me more. If I do more things, He will love me more. And initially, I saw 10 people a day for counseling. And I started to burn out. And a friend of mine came to me one day and we were busy with a seminar with some men and all that. And I was busy writing a book. And he came to me on the, on the Saturday morning and he said to me, Tian, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean what I'm doing? I'm busy writing a book. We're busy with a seminar. The speaker is speaking to the men over there. What do you mean? He said, no, no, no. The Lord showed me three pictures about you. And I want to find out from you what's going on in your life. And I said, what did the Lord show you? He said, well, the Lord showed me a house with a little veranda. And I saw you sitting there with your hands behind your back. And you were peering over the uh, canyons and, and over there in, in, into the far distant reaches. I said, yes. And then he said, well, then the Lord showed me an elephant. And I said, yes. And then he said, and then the Lord showed me a hospital bed. And I said, yes. So what does this mean to you? He said to me, Tian, the Lord said to me, if you don't start to rest now, because you are too thick-skinned to listen to what he's saying, you will end up in hospital. And I closed my laptop in that moment. It was about 11 o'clock. And I said to the people at the seminar, I'm going home now. I'm going to rest. I got to home at, uh, got to home at about half past 11 or 12 or thereabouts. And I said to my wife, I'm going to bed now. I'm going to sleep. And I slept from 12 o'clock on that Saturday to 12 o'clock on the Sunday. For 24 hours I slept, you see, because my body was in burnout. But I thought I was doing this for the Lord. He will be so pleased if I do these things. And a few days later, when I started speaking to the Lord about this, I said, Lord, okay, teach me now what's going on. And he said to me, Tian, you must understand one thing. My love for you will not be one millimeter more if you minister to 10 people a day than when you minister to one person a day. And my love for you will not be one millimeter less if you only minister to one person a day instead of to ten persons a day. And he said to me, Tian, understand one thing, my son. My love for you is not bound to what you do for me. My love for you is bound to who I am. It's got nothing to do with your good deeds and what you want to do. And that day I suddenly realized, you see, this was the devil. He wanted to kill me in the ministry by letting me burn out. And I know of many preachers, pastors, reverends, who go into burnout because of this. Because they grew up believing that they must produce. We were so performance driven. And so we come into ministry and we are performance driven in ministry. And Satan laughs at us because he uses that performance drivenness to kill the royal seed. He kills ministries. He kills churches because the pastors and the reverends are performance driven instead of just loving the Lord Jesus and letting Him lead them in what they must do, how many people to see on a day, how many, how many people to minister to, or whatever the case may be. And I really pray that He will also reveal in your heart what is Satan using in your heart? What is Athalia using in your heart? What is Jezebel doing in your life to manipulate you away from the royal seed that God planted in your heart? But beware of burnout. Beware of performance drivenness that is not the Holy Spirit. That is Satan driving you to try and kill you before God can use you according to His Word. And again, let's stop doing dead religious works because we do not serve a dead God. In Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18 we read, Jesus says, Fear not, I am the first and the last. 
I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who made it possible for us to have eternal life, and he who makes it possible for us to live in his victory over the enemy, attacking us on a daily basis. So to glorify him, let us end in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your wisdom, the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will convict every person who watches this DVD of the truth of your word so that they can also become, be set free and become dedicated priests, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, that the priestly anointing in their lives will break the hold of the Athalia spirit and any other spirit in their lives so that they will become dedicated and committed priests in your holy army that they will show other people to be set free from the enemy in their lives and so that you can be glorified in every one of our lives and we thank you lord jesus that you made that possible for us thank you that we can have eternal life because of what you did for us and that we must just receive that and make it our own but thank you that you also give us the authority to live in that on a daily basis in our normal daily lives be glorified in our lives lord we ask it in the mighty name of jesus christ amen